Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fever Media 2. How's it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. My name is Chad. With me is Leonard. This is a show about wrestling, but Leonard guested on a show recently, and he wanted to say a few words about that. Yes, I'd like to give a big tip of the top hat to Jesse Starcher of Trip Up Trivia uh, podcast. It is part of the Rattaluch, if I'm saying that correctly, podcast network. So this guy's part of a network of podcasts. And it came up that they were looking for contestants and someone who knew him, knew me, and suggested me. And I wound up guesting on the show. So it was 30 wrestling trivia questions. I won't spoil how I did. Uh, but I don't think I embarrassed myself nor the channel. Uh, and uh, I believe the way the timing goes, that episode will already be up by the time this episode is up. So I believe you can find that anywhere where you download podcasts. Again, that is Trip Up Trivia. I also wanted to, to mention that I know I've talked about the long-term fantasy booking league that I do here. It's called Universal Wrestling Association. It can be found at, found at madstepdad.proboards.com. It's the spring, so we're doing kind of a recruitment drive. Uh, check it out, and you can always find me on there to ask any questions uh, about that if you're interested. And I'm definitely going to check out that podcast. So uh, definitely shout out to those guys. It's good that they had you on. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's dive into our topic this week. If this is your first time joining us. Then... And I should mention uh, the uh, Jesse Let Me Plug, our show at the beginning and the end. So I really want to thank him for that. And because of that, I wanted to plug his show on ours. Well, that makes total sense. And we yeah. are not part of a network yet, but we hope to be someday. Maybe, maybe we'll talk to the red, to the Rattaluches. <laughs> yeah. So we do a little thing here called fever dreams. This is our 13th installment of fever dreams. And this will be our fever mania number two. And how we do that here is we have a random name generator website. We have lists of various talent, male, female. We have a list of gimmick matches, a list of managers, tag teams, so on and so forth. Many different lists. And we put those lists into the name generator. And based on what matches we have laid out, will come those random names. And Leonard and I will debate on who we think would win. Okay, so last time we did Fever Dreams, it was our Ready to Rumble Fever Dreams episode, mm -hmm. and we have done the research from that episode, and based on that, we had Braun Strowman, the Wyatt family version of Braun Strowman, win a dark match. We had Seth Rollins of the Authority version of Seth Rollins defeat Mr. America, and as a result... Those two guys are going to be put in a five-way match for a random belt. And Leonard is going to draw the three other names in that match. Oh. While I draw the name of the random belt. So the three names who will be in this match are Frankie Kazarian, The Master, and Lionheart Chris Jericho. All right. So I'm unsure of who the master is. Yeah. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea who the master is. Or is that um, from the, oh, God, what was that stable in WWF during the Attitude Era um, with Kurgan? It's not that guy, is it? Oh, that was the Commandant. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah, no, it's not it's not the commandant. So yes, well, it doesn't really matter. Chances are. Oh, okay. I found it. The master is also King Curtis Iakea. Okay. So he was Kevin Sullivan's master. Kevin Sullivan referred to him as master at times. So it's King Curtis Iakea. All and right. They... Well, and they will be fighting for the AWA World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, I'm glad we can revive that title. I'm very happy that we can revive that title. So, Leonard, who do you think would come out the winner here? All right. So, um, you know, the fact that it's the AWA belt. I'm sorry we don't have any old AWA guys in this. 
because I would go, I would just go with them because uh, they deserve to have it. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm really interested in, I hope that Strowman and Ikea take each other out. I think they cancel each other out. And you're down to Leinhart, Chris Jericho, Seth Rollins, Frankie Kazarian. That's a hell of a triple threat. Absolutely. That's a really, really good match. That's really tough to figure out who wins out of that. Um, part of me is leaning towards authority Rollins because he's the the heel. Frankie's probably working heel. Lionheart's probably working face. So you you could sway me to Jericho, but I'm going to lean towards Rollins being that he's the heel, and I feel the heel should get the initial win for the belt, and then Jericho would chase. You're going deep politics on this one. I'm going deep politics, yes. Well, you know, I'm, I would say that Authority Seth Rollins was more in, at his peak form than mm-hmm. was Lionheart Chris Jericho, mm-hmm. um, although it's very close. I will say that it would be a very close match and it would be a hell of a triple threat. Um, but I, I was thinking more of Seth Rollins from the authority to be our winner here. So mm-hmm. that would mean that. our AWA world heavyweight champion is Seth Rollins, the authority version. And we will see what happens with that belt from here on in. Now, now to mention, I thought I was drawing the belt. So I already had one draw before we came on the air. And it was the NWA Louisiana Tri-State Heavyweight title. See, that would have been a better one. That would have been such a good belt, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe next time we'll have to incorporate that one. Yes. So, so our number two match of the evening is our tag team number one contenders match. It will be a fatal four-way, which a fatal four-way was how we thought of this idea initially. But instead of four individual guys, we have four tag teams competing in a match. And it will be CM Punk and Luke Gallows from the Straight Edge Society versus Heavy Machinery versus Taylor and Morton from the York Foundation versus the Brothers of Destruction. Oh. <laughs> I know. Like, you have three really great teams, and then when you hear that last one, it kind of gives yeah. away the answer right away, doesn't it? Right, right, right. Now, now, long-time listeners know that we are huge York Foundation marks. Um, the only team that I can see giving the Brothers of Destruction a run for their money here would be Punk and Gallows. Gallows can match them on size, Punk, of course, can wrestle with anybody. So I think it comes down to those two teams. But Chad's right. With the size, the ability, the popularity, the stroke backstage, everything that I kind of usually consider in these, the Brothers of Destruction has that above everyone else. So if you want to argue Punk and Gallows, go for it. But I got to go Brothers of Destruction. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you uh, that Punk and Gallows would probably be their toughest contenders, although I think Punk and Gallows versus Taylor and Morton would be a hell of a, you know, regular tag team match. Um, heavy Machinery is kind of the odd team out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, well, they can certainly kind of – they're big dudes. I don't, I don't know if they last long against – like if it was a straight match between Kane and Taker, even though Heavy Machinery are big guys – I don't think that's a long match. No, yeah, I agree. And um, what a I mean, this would have to be the Brothers of Destruction winning, and what a number one contender that is. When in the big scheme of things, knowing who our champs are, we'll get to that eventually. Yes. But our next match has is for well, we should add that we changed the names of our belts. Um, we yes. decided we- that the uh, Unified Galaxy All Weight title didn't roll off the tongue quite so well so we decided to change the names of our belts permanently here and as this is fever dreams fever dream wrestling we decided to call our belts the fdw belts so this would be for the fdw women's title and our champion is mickey james and she will be facing in a one-on-one match with a gimmick attached and managers i will be drawing the gimmick Leonard will be drawing the managers, and it will be against China. Now, both women, this is the prime form of both women. They were in a triple threat last time. Or, yeah, was it a triple threat? Yeah. I think it was, it might, it was either a triple threat or a four-way, because I think 
I think I went with Mickey and you went with China. I it believe. It was a draw. Yeah, it ended it up being. Draw. We ended up Probably calling it draw. a draw, and we were going to do this gimmick. So, mm-hmm. Mickey James versus China in a thirty-minute Iron Man match. Okay. And the managers are Mickey James is with Jim Cornette, and China is with Harvey Whippleman. Oh, <laughs> you see, oh man. See, this is where, in my opinion anyway, a gimmick and managers can really sway who the winner would be. Yeah. And based on the gimmick itself, I was already leaning towards Mickey James because mm-hmm. I could see her going 30 minutes better with more cardio, you know, mm-hmm. more energy than would China already. But when you have Jim Cornette as Mickey James's manager, and Harvey Whippleman on the other side. Harvey Whippleman ain't doing anything to help China win. If anything, he's going to prevent her from winning. Yes, I th- I think Jim Cornette is good for a plus one pinfall. And yeah. I think Harvey Whippleman's good for a minus one. Yeah, like like he's gonna like interfere poorly, like get up on the apron and China's gonna get ran into him, something like that. So Mickey's a plus two just on the managers. So I would have to pick Mickey James here in an upset. I would go with Mickey James too, again, for what we sell. I, and I'll even give you, I'll say that China, like I said, I, th- I think Mickey gets a plus two based on the managers. I'll give China two wins early on. So I will say it will be two, two down the stretch. And Mickey through all kinds of chicanery, cheating. <laughs> pull, I will say she will pull the tights for uh, for a butt shot for the people. Hey. And when and when three two when three two is time expires, and she might even try that uh, you know versus Trish move at WrestleMania where she licks her hand you know as a distraction, you know. Yes, maybe, and maybe in Fever Dream Wrestling we could make that just a part of her character. Or that's that's a, it's it's hand licking Mickey James. That's yeah. we're gonna add that. Yeah. We're, we're gonna add that to the list. Yeah, we gotta add that. Hand uh, licker Mickey James. All right, so Mickey James retains. Mm-hmm. And we will determine who her number one contender is in our next match. Yes. Also a fatal four-way. Leonard has drawn the names for that fatal four-way. And it will be all women. So, Leonard, who do we have? So, it's uh, Santina Morella, Miss Atlanta Lively. No, I'm joking. Because you said they would all be women. So yeah, well, Technically, yeah. that's... <laughs> Technically. So, any, so, so, anyway, here we go. Here's the four. This is a hell of a four-way. I give you that. It's Ember Moon versus Natalia versus Ivory versus Queen Charlotte Flair. You know, I think that in their prime, I think Ivory and Charlotte Flair would have had a lot of chemistry. Uh, I, I can I can just see some of the promos back and forth there being really good to watch. And uh, I, that's a match that I would have liked to have seen. Like, it's cool that we were able to see recently Lita versus Becky Lynch. Obviously, mm-hmm. that was probably a dream come true for Becky Lynch. And uh, even though Lita's past her prime, it's still a cool idea. And the fact that they're able to do it. Ivory, obviously, is a little bit older. So I don't think we're going to see that. But uh, I would pick Charlotte Flair here um, because, you know, I think she's the best of those four easily. Natalia is kind of the dark horse there. Ember Moon is still growing as a talent, but I like her work as well. But I would still overall have to go with Charlotte Flair. Yeah, I mean, I like all four of these ladies. I think this would be a great four-way all the way around. I think they all bring something different to the table, but could all work with each other really well. But yeah, of, of those four, definitely Flair, especially the Queen version, is the one that you would probably have to put up you know, up, up, up a notch. I think this probably would come down to uh, Natty and, and Charlotte Flair. I think Ivory and Bermoon would probably go off on their own. And I could see that being a future bout. Like Bermoon versus Ivory, I think, could be a feud for you if this was a legit Fed and you were legit booking. Uh, but, yeah, I got to agree with you, Charlotte Flair, all the way here. All right. Our number five match on the card is – also incorporating somewhat of an in-joke. So our FDW tag team champions are the Mega Powers. They have turned heel, and they are now the Mega Powers Foundation with Alexandra York 
uh, Terrence Balea and Randall Poffo, right, Leonard? Yes, that's that's what they're going at. They're in business suits. They look very <laughs> cheap. It's very cool. I think that this would be great to see, honestly. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody else has to say about it. Um, but they are going to be facing in a regular tag team. Well, not regular, but it's just two tag teams. The yes. Hollywood Blondes. And so in this match, there's going to be a gimmick attached and there's going to be a run-in. Now, with our run-ins, we have to decide who we think this one run-in, who they would benefit and whether or not it would make a difference. So Leonard is going to draw the gimmick. I have drawn the run-in. So Leonard, go ahead. Well, the gimmick is going to affect the run-in, I believe. Okay. Because this this tag team bout is going to be inside the six sides of steel. Okay. So it's the TNA cage, just the T. So it's a six-sided ring steel cage. All right. And the run-in who I'm not sure if he's going to be any help to the team, and it's going to be obvious what team he's going to help, is the four horsemen version of Paul Roma. <laughs> well, I assume he's helping the Hollywood Blondes, right? Or, or <laughs> no, you when he did with the York Foundation. Well, yeah. But I, yeah. No, what's the long form of Paul? Paul is just Paul. Because he doesn't have a long form of his name. He yeah, he can't, you can't long out. form his name. Yeah. You can't long form his name. So he's got to be with – he's got to be with – uh, the the uh, Hollywood Blondes. See, now that's the thing. I hope you were going to draw somebody like Haystacks Calhoun because he can't climb the cage. So he would just right. be outside like shaking the cage. Roma could conceivably climb the cage. And Paul Roma in our world has dyed his hair blonde. So he fits. Yes. So it's it's Hollywood Blonde Paul Roma. <laughs> I want him added to the list of singles wrestlers. Hollywood Absolutely. Blonde Paul Roma. So uh, are we in agreement that he probably wouldn't help them very much? I don't think so. Like, is he is he is he bringing in a foreign object? That's the thing. We need a list of foreign objects. I actually do have a list of foreign objects, but for now, we'll just have it be just him. We won't do that. But so so it, you would have to see how much help would he be? He could climb the cage. Uh, question: Is Alexandra York inside the cage or outside the cage? I would assume she's outside the cage. She's outside the cage. Okay, so he could he could come out and like grab Alexandra, and then because you know how Hogan and Macho Man or Boea and Poffo yeah. how they do with that, you know? Let's call them by their correct names, Leonard. Please. Okay. <laughs> So you know how what happens when a woman comes between those two guys. When they were faces. When they were faces. See, now when they were heels, now they're heels, they may not give a shit. Yeah, they might not care. They yeah. might care more about the computer dropping to the ground than, yes. than her. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I think Roma is not going to help much because he's not going to get into the cage. And even if he steals Alexandra, that's not really going to bother them, we don't think. So. Right. I see this. I see this as being the Hollywood Blondes running for their lives up the cage to yeah. try and get away from uh, Poffo and Balea. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I just see this not being a slaughter. I think it would be a good match, especially like a six-sided ring. It would be an interesting to see this dynamic. What a cluster of eras and styles that you would have here, really. But uh, I, I think that this would have been fun to see um whether it be without the gimmick or not um but i do see the mega powers foundation retaining here what do you think now if this was our 30 minute iron man match i would probably go with the hollywood blocks yeah it might be different yeah yeah it might be different but being what it is again it's inside of steel cage uh you know it, it's crazy to think this is like a heel versus heel but it's like monster heels versus chicken shit heels which is yeah. kind of dynamic Belay doesn't lose cage matches very often. No, no, I don't think that's going to happen. So, given who it is and the gimmick, uh, I, I agree with you. I think this would be an awesome cage match. This could be a main event cage match anywhere in the world. I think it's a great bout, and I agree with you that we're going to go with the Mega Powers Foundation. And I'm just ecstatic that that gimmick gets to move on for another day. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So our next match is going to be a stable versus stable match. In our last Fever Dreams episode, we had a Royal Rumble of sorts, hence the name, Ready to Rumble Fever Dreams. And the winner of that Rumble was the corporation version of The Rock. And the final two was Bret Hart and The Rock. So 
The Rock is technically the number one contender for our championship, but he has elected to get that title shot at another time because the feud that he's really interested in right now is the corporation versus the Hart Foundation. So that is what we have here. We, I have taken all the names of the corporation members and the Hart Foundation members. Now I should add, I didn't include Natalia in this list and I didn't include the couple foundation members that were apparently members outside of the WWE, uh, of which there are a couple. So I have incorporated all the members. It's going to be four on four with a gimmick. Now, I will tell you the gimmick first, which is it is going to be a War Games. Oh, so, it has to be a War Games. I'm ecstatic that it's a War Games. So on the Hard Foundation side, we have Davy Boy Smith Jr., we oh. have the British Bulldog. We okay, have, father, son. We have Bret Hart, and we have Ted DiBiase Jr. Oh, I forgot about Ted Jr. Yeah, okay. And they will be facing The Rock, Shawn Michaels, Kane, and Pat Patterson. Okay, so Kane's working twice for, for us tonight. That's right. I don't remember Shawn Michaels being in the corporation. He's on the list in Wikipedia. All right. Question, did the Hart Foundation include Brett's brothers? Yes. Okay. Okay. They did not get drawn, but I, I would was, I was dr- I was honestly dreading like this being like Brett, Keith, Bruce. <laughs> the Hart the Hart brothers. I I would love the the being the Hart brothers. So it's a war games match, and I, I think we could probably figure out what the order they would come come in. Sure. Uh, you know, Rock and Brett are last for yep. both their because Without, that's, that's the major feud, right? That's the major feud. They're the last ones coming in. I think Kane Kane starts against Ted Junior. That's that's a that's a good uh, pairing. Beats the crap out of him, of course. Yeah. Uh, the heels, of course, would win the coin toss and have the two man advantage. So next in for the corporation would be who 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 else was in for the corporation? Shawn Michaels and yeah. Pat Patterson. Okay, Pat Patterson's next. <laughs> I think I think I think Pat's next. Then it would be Davy Junior. Then it would be Shawn Michaels. Then it would be Davy Senior, uh, and then Rock, and then Bret Hart. That would be my order. And you know this if the, if <laughs> there's clear there's a clear odd man out here. There's a weak link. There's a there's a JJ Dillon in this match. Yes. If anybody has seen the first War Games match, yes, and I. You kind of have to give this to the Hart Foundation simply because Pat Patterson is there and he is not peak form Pat Patterson. Right. This is corporate Pat Patterson. It is stooge Pat Patterson. Exactly. I assume that Jerry Briscoe is also on the list. He is, yep. Yes. Uh, see, that's the thing. If there was probably anyone else, I would go with the corporation. Because Yeah. That team is overall stronger. Nothing against Davy Jr. or Ted Jr., but though they're both, you know, much lesser than say your Shawn Michaels and your Kane. Uh, but yeah, it's obvious that Pat Patterson is going to take the loss for his team, uh, and it's probably going to be I'm going to say Brett with a sharpshooter on Patterson, while the rest of the guys are this keeping is, up. This is post '97 Survivor Series, Brett. We're assuming here, like maybe he has all the knowledge of that screw job. <laughs> possible possible uh but i'm gonna say that everyone is in the other ring like they're fighting they're keeping everyone at bay brett cranks on the sharpshooter and and pat patterson submits so i yeah i i think so the Hart foundation is a clear winner here and i think before we get to the rock in the number one contender spot i think even you know i think we have to have a, a rock versus brett match with a gimmick attached sometime here yeah. I definitely, I definitely do. I, I think that feud needs to be put to bed before The Rock gets his title shot. And I like the fact that we're building long-term storylines here. I like, I like it. I, I, I know that's that's one of the best parts about this, and uh, that will be exciting to see. And our next match is going to be a number one contenders match for our FDW championship. Okay, and. This will be a one-on-one match, and the winner will advance to our main event. And the two names that we have drawn are the heel version of Triple H 
and the Thugonomics version of John Cena. Okay. Well, there's been many different heel versions of Triple H. So, yeah. so I'll, I'll let you decide which heel version this is. I think this should probably be the version that's around Thugonomics John Cena. So okay, what mid mid? So it would be like Reign of Terror Triple H versus Thugonomics John Cena. With that being the case, it's kind of hard to make because this is a younger, not quite you know the 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 talent that he would grow into be John Cena versus Triple H at his political peak backstage. Right. So um, I would definitely go with Reign of Terror Triple H over John Cena pretty easy here yeah i would lean that way as well i i do think that the thugonomics cena was really on the rise you know especially wrestlemania 20 where he faced big show um you know so he was like really rising the ranks pretty fast uh but yeah he wasn't quite at the level of triple h so i think that this would be a maybe not an easy win for triple h but a uh, clear cut win let's just say that mm -hmm. so that would mean that triple h is going to be advancing to our main event and our number one contender from last time is edge the comeback version of edge the so current edge that is because he was the wcw light heavyweight champion if i recall correctly and he turned in that belt for a shot at the fdw universal championship and our champion is Stu Hart. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it will be comeback edge versus Stu Hart versus heel triple H. Okay. Leonard, who do you got? Well, you had my name down here on the list that you sent me. You're so right. I had actually, I had generated a name. I thought I was generating a name. That's so well. you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to pull <laughs> and make this a, 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 a a four-way. It's a fatal four-way now. The commissioner my, has spoken. My mystery entrant is Big Cat Ernie Ladd. <laughs> That's who you... Big Cat Ernie Ladd was the one you just had to put in this match. He was the name. He was the name I drew was Big Cat Ernie Ladd. <laughs> the commissioner has come out and, and said, damn it, Big Cat Ernie Ladd is going to be in this match. So by doing that, I think Big Cat Ernie Ladd and Sue Hart cancel each other out. Oh wow! Okay, this is that's my opinion. You can argue different. So I think this comes down to Reign of Terror Triple H versus Comeback Version of Edge. Um, again, prime political Triple H. Uh, this is not Edge in his prime, of course, but an Edge that could still go, and an Edge with a lot of baby face, uh, you know, power and sympathy. And you want to send the folks home on a good note. And believe it or not, and you can argue me the other way or to any of the other guys, but I'm going to give the edge to edge. So wait, after all that, you're going with edge to win this. I'm going with edge to win this. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll tell you how I was going. Um, since I didn't incorporate big cat or lad into my thoughts, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to go a different way and say that, Ernie Ladd and Edge cancel each other out. Okay. Being that Edge is a little bit older. I don't know which version of Big Cat Ernie Ladd this is. We'll just assume that it's an older version. <laughs> and I think they would cancel each other out. I do think that this would be an interesting match between Triple H and Stu Hart. And I see, you know, if this were like a straight up match with no chicanery, I think that Stu Hart could make Triple H tap without any issue. Right. But I, I see Triple H, you know, going for the sledge or, you know, cheating somehow. I give I would give the slight edge here to Triple H. Okay. And being that I could be swayed on this one because I was going with booking sensibilities. I want the face to win to send the fans home happy. <laughs> I can certainly understand your reasoning just from a pure – looking at it on paper standpoint. So therefore I will uh, switch. I will go with you and we'll say that uh reign of terror, triple H wins and is our new uh, FDW world heavyweight champion or universal wow. champion. I believe universal champion. And how about it, Leonard? I believe he'll be our fourth 
our fourth champion, we had AWA Hogan. Yes. We had DX Shawn Michaels, Stu Hart, and now <laughs> heel Triple H. Stu Hart's a blip there. He he feels he's yeah. the, uh, he's the stand the man Stasiak of the of of our of <laughs> our. Uh, Title reign, title reign. Sure, people looking at that list of title reigns would be like, okay, okay, wait, what? <laughs> hey, before before we go, um, I want to do a dark match because I had right. generated two names uh, because Chad was having a little trouble getting one of his lists together. Uh, so I have a match that's a good match, I think. Uh, once again, we're making somebody work twice, but they turned between uh, that and the dark match. We have uh, Brian Pillman as a face, WCW face Brian Pillman, versus heel Adam Cole. Cole. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this is young Brian Pillman, uh, very much uh, energetic, very much an innovator uh, against. Uh, uh, now, this is a which version of heel Adam Cole it is. Um, you know, this could be it could be Ring of Honor, could be NXT, could be AEW. Uh, but definitely a bad guy version of Adam Cole. So, right. Chad, talk to me. What do you like? I think it's a good match. Yeah, this would be a really good match. And you know what? I think that this would be a really even match. Um, it's really tough to pick a clear winner here. And I don't know, Leonard, follow my line of thinking here. Okay. But I have in my head, I have this, you know, being like, you know, you have Adam Cole, who is always willing to, you know, do something heelish. I see this being like a double DQ or a double count out. And I see this, our commissioner, and I guess you're our commissioner this week. Um, our commissioner is saying, you know what? Next week, we're going to have a triple threat for the AWA World Heavyweight Championship. Seth Rollins, Brian Pillman, and Adam Cole. That is a, that is a hell of a triple threat. <laughs> and, and I agree with you. And that's what we're going to see. Now, it should also be mentioned, if I understand our rules correctly, the winner of that triple threat will be the AWA World Heavyweight Champion, but will they not have the ability to turn that title in for a title shot? Yeah, they could if they wanted to. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So we'd have to, we'd have to argue that one way or the other to see if that person would indeed. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to say Seth Rollins will hold on to the AWA title at this time. Yeah. And then after the triple threat, we'll go back and see how anyone feels about turning in the belt. If it's Reign of Terror Triple H, I think I would say, you know what? I'm good. I'm I'm good as the <laughs> AWA World Heavyweight Champion. I'm just going to sit right here. Absolutely. Well, um, that will be coming up on our next Fever Dreams episode. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Let us know if you disagree with who we think would win some of these matches. Um, any thoughts you have, please let us know in the comments. But uh, please check us out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Hit the like button on our YouTube video and subscribe to our channel. Every little bit helps. And for Leonard, my name is Chad. We will see you next week. And Alexa, we'll see you out.